everyone scrappy kathy here with scrap squad sunday and um <laughs> i'm gonna have a little bit of fun with this one while deviating dramatically from the original i love this uh, it's got the ar two arrows here and the one arrow here and the photo there not a lot of embellishments there are some triangles and some hearts and some numbers and you know just small things and some ink splotches here, this one that was done by Karen Cass looks to me, and I haven't, I haven't uh, researched this. I just kind of printed it off without, and, and decided that I'm, I'm going to figure out how she did that so that I can do it one of these days. I'm not going to do it today. But it looks like she took a bunch of different alphas and glued them to a 12 by 12 page, then painted over them with gray paint and then splotched some white splotches and smears around it and then put what looks like the same um if not the same arrow files at least the same type of arrow files except she cut some bits off so I i'll tell you right up front i don't have those arrow cut files but i had another cut file that was at one time whole <laughs> but i cut pieces off of it and it looks like this now and I, as many of you know, I started a conversation about basic gray and I've had basic gray on my brain. So I, I, I fussy cut a piece of um, Scarlet's Letter basic gray paper yesterday for a different layout, a very different layout. And I had some scraps left, so I decided not to back the cut file, but to front the cut file. And you'll see what I mean by that in a minute. I wanted to use this photo of Barrett getting his hair dyed by his older sister, Katie. Um, he, he wanted a cheetah print. And if any of you know who Dennis Rodman is, he did that to his hair a few years back. Um, so uh, the cheetah being the fastest animal, Barrett had a football game last night. He wanted his hair done cheetah style so he could be fast. And believe me, he was. And the team won. It's the first game that his high school team has won in two years. His entire, he after being one of the top ranked middle school players and drawing all the attention of the press and colleges and high schools and having all kinds of offers for scholarships to private schools and things like that, um, things quieted down because his team lost all of their games in when he was in the ninth grade. And he was a starter in the ninth grade, which was great for him, but uh, the team lost. So he, he, his stats kind of didn't mean anything to him as long as the team wasn't winning. Same thing happened his sophomore year. Um, which, of course, was COVID, and you can kind of blame it on all kinds of things to do with COVID. But this year, um, new approach to things, new coach, um, new team. Some of the freshmen who are coming up are, um, uh, you know, look really good, and they've had some good practices. So they had a spring game last night, and it was amazing. So uh, I was I was thrilled. Anyway, this was the hair he wanted. So... This is the original photo right here. I wanted to give you a, an idea of my um, photo editing software that I have, or apps, actually. They're just apps on my phone. And um, so this was the original. It was in a bathroom that's painted gray. His shirt is gray. It wasn't particularly interesting. Um, you know, you could kind of see the spots on the hair, but you really couldn't see the color differentiation. There's black on the outside and kind of a brown on the inside, now that it's dried, it, it shows and it looks just like a cheetah print. So, and then this, this beach towel was kind of bothering me because I'm, I'm going with a basic gray kind of color palette here. And I'll explain that to you in a minute. Um, so I ran it through my waterlog app, which converts it to a watercolor painting kind of. And the color, it brightened the colors and it, it kind of, um, uh, whitened the gray wall. I like this much better, but it wasn't going to look good on this background. So I went to my uh, Prisma app and I tried a, I think this one is called Crowd. 
uh, filter and I, I tried a bunch of them and crowd got the closest because I really like all how it, it kind of uh, adds little uh, flicks of color in different places. And I really loved how his hair looked there. So I thought, well, that's still not what I'm looking for. So I found another filter called Mono OK, and it converts things to something of a, um, well, I'm going to call it a basic gray color palette, and I'm trying to do something sort of monochromatic, but given a photo with a whole bunch of colors. And so it, it does this kind of sepia tone. And then I found that I had a, um, a sheet of warm white, it's ink press rag, uh, printer paper, 100% cotton rag. It's wonderful. It's natural white, but it's warm tone. So it, where there are warm tones, it kind of brightens them up and makes them warmer. So this uh, little streak on his neck kind of, it emphasizes the oranges and the reds and it, I really love what it did. So that's what I printed it on to use on my layout. And I just did this on regular typewriter paper so you could see how much fun I have playing around with filters on my phone. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead, before I go any further, I printed it on this paper. Normally I try to print quite a few different um, photos on a piece of paper because I don't like cutting paper into smaller pieces. But this one left, the reason I put this writing here is because it left me this that I can print maybe a four by four or even a five by five on. So I'll put that aside. I'm just gonna cut this without a border and I may cut some pieces off of it. Katie's t-shirt is kind of not all that great. I'm going to leave his phone on there, but kind of cut it so maybe you can't tell that that's the back of the toilet. And I'm going to go here so that I can cut. I will cut her t-shirt off, but you can still see her hand. And I'm going to cut some of that um, wall off. Okay, so that kind of trims it down. And to be honest, I can't, until I print something, I do some cropping on my computer, but until I print it, a lot of times I can't tell how or if I want to crop it more. And it's all about kind of getting the uninteresting pieces out that would either um, distract from the page or, um, you know, embarrass someone <laughs> or whatever. So I'm gonna cut it. Normally I cut these out by hand and let them be kind of free form, but I thought I wanted this one to be somewhat um, orderly looking. I don't have many embellishments here, but I'll kind of tell you why I chose the ones I did. Okay, let me cut the branding strip off this. The page that I'm cutting scraps out of is this one uh, from Scarlet Le Scarlet's Letter, and I forget what the name of the specific paper is. This one is from a different collection called Oxford, which is kind of um, a uh, school type, a school themed collection. And it goes back, I think, to 2011, um, a time when I was very much hooked on, on basic gray. This one, this uh, sheet is called Magna Cum Laude. Yeah, it is 2011. And it's got this wonderful, um, uh, I forget what kind of check you call that, sort of a tweed kind of look. And I, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to. Well, I, I'll I'll let you in on a little bit of a a mistake. I've got these things taped and pinned. I thought I could arrange this cut file on here, 
kind of like this and then have this one up here and maybe put the photo somewhere in here. Um, but we'll, we'll see. So I cut those scraps and when I cut this first one, I traced it on the back and I meant to cut it outside the line and I cut it inside the line, leaving it like this. So I thought, well, why not just go with that? So instead of lifting up the cut file, instead of this backing right into the cut file and then lifting up the cut file by that, I'm going to, um, okay, where is that? I know, no, 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 this goes down in here. That's where that came from. I'm going to lift up the center, and, and this one I'm going to actually place on top of these lines. Let's see if that's, that doesn't seem to be fitting right. Um, this has to go there, I think. Yeah, that, that probably goes there. And I may put some embellishments on that since there's not a very commanding looking print there. So I have this piece of this cut file and some more of those scraps. And trust me, I'm not wasting any of that. Those will show up in paper layers behind photos and all kinds of fun things. Okay, so, but the first thing, and I, I love that these have kind of grungy dark backgrounds and then the crisp white cut files. So I kind of liked that about this, but I think I'm gonna do something different. Or do I wanna just leave it? I, I think I may, well, you know what? I think I'm gonna leave it white, just because that really, if I, if I colored it, I was gonna color it with this black soot distress oxide and then spray it with some gold, um, some uh, Jen Hadfield gold ink. So instead, I'm gonna go ahead and glue it down. I think my tape runner can work to glue this down. I'm gonna glue this down kind of close-ish to the bottom. And, and then I may, I'll, I'll ink the outside edges of those, um, of those little inside pieces. And I have an idea for somewhat um, giving a nod to the raised letters in Karen Cass's version. I'm gonna move this one kind of up here. And this was dictated pretty much by the natural uh, form of this cut file. I'm not really trying to replicate arrows. Um, I'm kind of trying to do something a little bit um, grungy and artsy, and um, that's probably where the idea for using the inks for inking this came from. But I think the, the there's enough um, artsy grunge kind of in the back of this. So let me, since I don't need it, I'm going to get rid of this. And I will, once I get these placed, I'm not sure how we decided this one needs to go. I may just do it. Let's see how it would look if I put it under. I actually kind of like that, but let me, um, 
ink the edges, and I'm going to ink with brown rather than black. And it's this ink pad has been used for black, so it's a very uh, blackish brown. <laughs> and that's why I'll put that under. Do the same thing for this. And I'll try to concentrate all my embellishments right in there. Okay, that goes right there, and I'm going to pop that up. And I'm thinking that the load prompt today is to scrap about something we care about. And the um, kind of the implication there is that you would scrap about a cause or something that uh, you're passionate about. And I think there's um, a lot of opportunity in a subject like that to... Um, for polarization, and I, I think there's too much of that going on, and I don't care to participate in it. So I think I'm not going to, to do that. Uh, almost everything that I uh, thought of to, um, along those lines, was something that would possibly generate an argument with people I very much care about and honestly don't care how they feel about those particular subjects. I just kind of know how I behave and feel about them. So enough said about that. I'm going to, uh, so something I care about, I care about uh, Barrett <laughs> because he's uh, the only grandson I've got and he's such a special, talented, brilliant kid um, who works very hard at what he's passionate about, which is uh, football. And so I thought I'd, and I had these cute photos. Let's see how this is gonna work. Is that gonna... Yeah, I think that that will work. And because that's where the embellishments are going to be, uh, I'm okay with, um, with these being uh, popped up and, and this one being underneath. Okay, so the photo I thought could kind of sit right in here. And I think I may raise up the outside end of it, but I think that's probably all I'm going to do um, as far as setting up the photo. Now, where is my run like a cheetah. Here it is. I kind of want that like this. And I need to cut my foam tape in half. I love that Barrett had the um, audacity to do this and I love that his sister had the artistry to be able to um, accomplish what he was going for that that's you know kind of one of the more surprising things about this okay now of course, I have my flares. I've selected um, these three. This one is from a COVID set, and it has colors that match the rest of the set. But I like that it's somewhat a reference to the colors in here 
and it has those zigzaggy arrow type things. So I thought maybe it wouldn't be bad just kind of barely poking out from under the photo. And maybe I'll make it poke out from under here. Okay, there. And then I've got this one, which has uh, kind of basic gray colors. And I thought maybe I'd just kind of plop that one right here in the middle of some of the similar colors since we're going for a bit of a, a monochromatic look. And then I'll build up a, a cluster there. And this one is actually the one that I think, this is from a, a glitter set and it's a little bit flatter. It's one of the new style ones and I thought it might fit better right there and I may do something else on top of that. I also have this saying that says just go for it and it's kind of in this same greenish color that's there. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, but it's a clear sticker and it won't show if I just plop it down on the paper. So I'm going to put it on white paper and then I'm going to fussy cut it out. I've got another thing here. I like this wild and free and I'm going to test and see if that would show if I put it across here or maybe right here, or do I need to put that on white? I kind of like the subtlety of this um, going on clear. So I'm going to leave that as it is. So I've got a little black and white arrow here. And I thought maybe I would do this that kind of gives a little bit of a nod to the arrows in the other one. I've got a green arrow here, but it's the wrong color green. I've got these black ones. Um, don't think I need anything else from those, but I'll kind of put them close by there. The next thing I'm going to do is cut out a couple of these hearts. There is a, a dark, well, first of all, let me figure out where just go for it's going to go. And I'm going to just kind of fussy cut that along just inside the line of the outline of the sticker so that I don't get any double outlines in it. So I'm, I'm kind of cutting inside that line and kind of moving it around with the curve of the script there. And just go for it kind of uh, works for when playing football and also when deciding to color one's hair. I like that, but it clearly needs to be popped up. Or do I want it here? That could be my title. And I could put it here and then cluster some hearts around it. So let's do that. And we'll leave the script here and maybe I'll do a heart over there. And seeing this on the white background makes me glad I left the cut files white. Not only does it um, kind of echo the original a little bit more, but it, um, It, this doesn't 
stand out and blind you as it would if everything else were um, grunged down to a, a gray or black. Okay, so these are um, heart stickers. You can kind of see I have a couple pink ones left. That's a color of pink that I don't use as much as I do the red and the black or these prints. This, these were designed by Amber LaBelle for Fancy Pants, and it was a Valentine collection. And I hate leaving these... Um, the outsides of these stickers. This one's already kind of been pulled up. So I'm gonna go over here. I hate leaving th this these scraps on a sticker sheet when I like outline stickers so much. So I just cut the, the, the part that joins the black here is clear so even if I end up leaving a little of what looks like white as I'm cutting it, uh, it'll be clear when it goes on, but I just kind of cut around it and then pull it off the backing. And I have a Well, I say that. I need my tweezers. I don't know what I would do without tweezers. Generally, I do it like this <laughs> with my tweezers. Okay, so I've got this, and I could, I could do a small one right there, I think, but maybe this one I can put there. And let me get a red one. And I may do a small red one right there. I've got the backing of that stuck to my scissors. I do this with every kind of sticker. These are actually, you know, puffy kind of plastic sort of stickers. And, you know, the, the contents inside, when you pull them out, kind of look like enamel dots. I guess they are sort of enamel stickers. And what they've done is they've printed them and, and left, and it's still puffy. This part that I'm cutting out is still puffy. They've printed them and then cut the center so that I think, because they have in mind that you might want to do this. I don't know how many of you know Amber LaBelle, but she's one of my favorite, was one of my favorite digital designers, and I've tended to buy all of her digital collections. I'm going to do that, and then you've got a little bit of that kind of... Right there. And, and I think I'm using a little enough red... And, and green, that, that it still kind of comes off as monochromatic, but we'll, we'll let uh, the, the load folks be the judge of that. It seems like I need something here, and I'm not quite sure what I have that I could use there. Maybe something from here. <laughs> says keep it real. Um, there's a black wonky heart. There's a thing that says um, roll with it. That might be might be fun and. I could kind of put it on the angle, and, and I think I could use it clear. And it looks like that's emphatically saying, you know, go for it and roll with it. Okay, that's good. Let's see if there's anything in 
this one there's some gold hearts there's a pink heart there's there i've got another one that had had some stars Looks like I've pretty much gutted the stars from there. Uh, there's one, there's three teeny tiny stars. So I kind of like that idea. And they're a gold foil. So I can maybe put one right there on roll. And... I can do one on Run Like a Cheetah. And this really teeny tiny one. Oh, this says Wild and Free. Let's see if I can punch it up from behind by pushing that down. Okay, where should this one go? I may put it right here on the black heart where I kind of cut it. Goofy. Um, I think I'm going to call that done, except for my dimension part. And you may gasp when I say this. It's going to have to dry, so I'm really going to have to be careful with it. I'm going to use... Well, okay, first of all, let's do the gold splatters. Actually, actually, let's do those last. I'm going to go emphasize some of these letters with glossy accents. So I'm just going to... I'm going to start up at the top so that I don't get my wrist in it. And I tested this before starting this. That just kind of goes over. I'm, I'm kind of following the outline of the letter, but it's going to be bigger than that. But it's still, when it dries, the uh, color of the letter will show through. It works, obviously, better on some of the larger letters. But I think it's going to look awesome. In order to get this, my glossy accents unclogged, I kind of had to um, make the hole bigger. So it's coming out. Um, normally, I can do a, a thinner line. And I need to get a, um, I'm going to emphasize some of the red as well as the black. And, and same with this light color blue that's on there. And these are mathematical formulas, which is kind of my jam, being a, a math major. Couldn't tell you what any of it means. I'm going to uh, consider it from an artistic standpoint. There, I messed up that line, but you know, that's okay. Let me come do um, this arc right in here, and maybe this set of angles this dimension I think is going to really look nice in the um, in the final photos I'll try to do some close-ups when I post it on Instagram and uh, Facebook okay so I've done that, and now I'm going to finish it off with splashes of gold. 
and I'm going to try to be careful and not hit the photo, but it isn't going to um, just freak me out if I do hit the photo. Let me fold this and kind of do that, and then we'll, that way I know that I won't hit the photo. So I'm just going to splatter the background paper, the glossy accents, the cut file, and, <laughs> and the flare. So pretty much everything is going to get a dose of that gold. And I'm going to have to let it dry naturally. Um, I'm going to use some glossy accents as glue here just to get that down. And I used a little too much and I don't have anything handy. Here we go to help me clean it up. Okay, and I see something right here that is um, trash from the cutting out the heart. And let me pull this up and turn it back around. And we've got a grungy, um, crazy hair page. I think I need more, well, no, I don't need more splatters down there. I'm going to leave it as it is. So, <laughs> does it, can you tell I used this as my inspiration? Possibly not. There's a cut file. There's a grungy dark background. There's some dimension. And there's a single photo and not a whole lot of paper layers or embellishments. So I'm thinking those are some of the major things I picked up from the original. And one of these days, you'll see me do one of those with the uh, actual alphas glued down on a page and then all painted the same color. I just think that is brilliant. So, and I thank Karen Cass for that inspiration. <laughs> and I thank Scrap Squad for wonderful, incredible inspiration every week. And I really enjoy doing these. So I'll see you next Sunday for Scrap Squad Sunday. Bye.